Passing gas can be deadly. Whoa. Oh, something's funky. Passing gas releases a plume of toxic vapors. Oh. Oh, honey, not in the car. Like ammonia and hydrogen cyanide. Oh. Oh. And lethal poisons that can linger even when windows are open. Kids shouldn't be exposed to secondhand smoke. Don't pass gas. Take it outside. I'm Sonia. I'm Avon. And I'm Kate. And today we're dishing with you from Teatro Goldoni, located at 1909 K Street Northwest. And we are some of the very first to be sitting at Teatro's brand new chef's table. I'm ready. <laughs> and our guest is Jim Epstein, who is the cheer chairman of Green DC Greenworks. And what is DC Greenworks, and why does it? Why do we need that in the city? Well, DC Greenworks is what I call a common good enterprise. Okay. Uh, we are focused on uh, dealing with stormwater issues in Washington, D.C. Uh, and so we deal with green roofs, we work with uh, rain barrels, rain gardens, uh, policy issues around uh, stormwater management issues in Washington, D.C. and the you know, region. the things you just mentioned are things we hear about all the time, but we hear about them in the newspaper or on TV. We have no idea what those things really are. Okay. Rain barrel. Rain barrel. It's a barrel of rain. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, okay, well, we'll start with the rain barrel. Then the rain barrel is, just, is really, literally, a barrel that is attached to your downspout, and the intent is that it fill up with water and then release it slowly. And so why do that, you need them? Because uh, in a typical rainstorm in Washington, D.C., all of that water will run immediately into the stormwater system and then into the, either the river or into the place where we process that water. And that's bad because? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, what happens is that in, a, in your typical natural environment, the water gets absorbed into the ground and then slowly releases into the river. So when you have all of the impermeable surfaces that we have in Washington or in any city, um, all of that water is sort of hitting the, those impermeable surfaces then immediately going into the stormwater system and immediately going into the rivers. And, and carrying so, all that pollution and pollu all the things on the yeah, ground right. and the sidewalks, I see. And what? one of those things is actually heat, hotter water because, you know, the pavements are heated up, mm -hmm. the roofs are heated up, so that water that goes into the systems is hotter than the normal Which affects ecology, our ecosystem. And it affects the ecosystem. Well, exactly and don't right. most of the, and I don't know about D.C., but the D.C. water purification, what, what is the official term yes. for that? The, it, the, 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 the sewer system that we, the, the, the sewer system that we have in Washington, D.C. is what's called a combined sewer system. So that means that all of the sewer mm -hmm. and the stormwater are in one system. And there are no pumps for that. It's all gravity? It's all gravity. Okay. But the, pro the challenge is that because it's combined, that means that the Blue Plains plant that's on the Anacostia River mm -hmm. has to process both the sewage and the stormwater. Wow. Now, if you imagine in the summertime when you have a major storm, mm -hmm. there is an awful lot of water that's being managed. Right. And in fact, it's so much water that the sewage treatment plant can't handle it. So what happens? It goes storm immediately plants. into the river wow. untreated, mm -hmm. the sewage and the stormwater. So as a result, the Anacostia River is one of the second, mo is the second most polluted river in the country. So as a result of that, the, 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 the district is now under court order to solve that problem. And the way they're planning to solve it is to build these underground storm tanks. Mm -hmm. the, the tanks are, there are two of them, and each one is the size of a metro station. So imagine wow. two underground st storage tanks that are the size of two metro stations holding that much water. There's a just well, a modest the price tag yeah. of about $2.2 .2 billion <laughs> wow. on today. Wow. Now, I'm sure that by the time they actually build it, it's going to be more than Is that. Is D.C. ahead of the game on, on green works, or are we really playing catch-up? <clears throat> That's a great question. Uh, the district actually has done a number of things uh, that really put us in the leading edge of cities in the country for uh, green roofs and this particular area. You know, Chicago is doing a tremendous amount. Seattle is doing a tremendous amount. So we have, you know, we, 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 we're going to keep the pressure on them uh, well, to do some good things. Well, let's back up and things. go back to green roofing, because we didn't yeah. really talk about that. We explained what a rain barrel was, right. but what is a green roof? 
Well, a green roof is the vegetated material that goes on top of a typical roof. So if you have to replace your roof, which you need to do about every 20 to 25 years, you would put a new roof on it, and then on top of that, you put the whole infrastructure system to hold a green roof. And basically, a green roof is a couple of layers of root material and drainage and so on, but then on top of that, about four inches of soil, and then sedums or other kinds of plants that have a, an ability to tolerate drought. So it's of, like because a you're not up there watering, watering them on a regular basis. So it's like a self-sustaining garden on your rooftop. Correct. So why would you want that? To help purify some of the water coming through? That is absolutely one of the things that it does. Um, it uh, uh, reduces the heat island effect, so some right. of that uh, water that's held there uh, re-aspirates into the environment. Uh, Probably one helps of the insulate other. your house, right. too, was, that's right? What I was thinking. And it keeps it insulation cooler, of the house warmer. is another benefit. Oh, wow. um, it also uh, slows down. So when I talked earlier about how the water immediately goes out and down into the drain, yeah. it actually holds about the first inch of rain okay. so that it, it has a beneficial effect for the rivers in that all that water is not going immediately into uh, the rivers, and then it's catching the pollutants and it's fixing the nitrate, the, the carbon in there. And Where can we see some of these green roofs? I'm thinking not in, in D.C., but in Roslyn they have that Freedom Park. Oh, we have green park. roofs. Well, but I'm, I'm thinking in, in Roslyn there's that Freedom Park, and I'm, is that a green area? No, I don't. It, it is well, over it's not the, in D.C. The one you're talking about is over the Route 66, I believe, is the one you're talking about, the Freedom Park? I think, yeah. But, but anywhere where you have a hard surface underneath it is, in essence, a green roof. Right. The one that we have in the districts is at 1425 K Street, is the first green roof that was put on a commercial building in the District of Columbia. DC Green Works put that one on. The first one we ever did was in 2001, down on, uh, on the pump station, down on the Anacostia River, and many buildings that want to get LEED certification mm -hmm. are now having green roofs put on them. Many residential units now do it, and one of the things that DC Greenworks will do is advise about how to do it and make it work for them and the kind of opportunities there are for individual family members, individual families to, to uh, put green roofs on. Wouldn't it be cool if there was like a bar with like an outdoor <laughs> sort of grass well, area, like it was a your, park, and yeah. then you could like sit there and you should go. Idea. You should go to the one on 1425K Street because they do. They're able yeah. to enjoy some of the space and then also look at the green roof. But DC Greenworks is the leader in green roofing in DC, and I would say one of the leaders in the United States because DC is probably a leader in green roofing. It is. Um, so tell us, we're in a new year. Everybody's talking about green. I mean, they've been talking about green, but now they're really talking about green. What is our what's our main project moving forward? What do you want us to take with us into 2010? Well, I think every roof has the... In the Washington, D.C., 75% of the roofs have an opportunity to put a green roof on. Wow. So I think if you're serious about helping the Chesapeake Bay, and we're on the Chesapeake Bay, you should seriously consider a green roof. Well, we'll be seriously considering it. Thanks for coming on with us. Thank you. And as always, thank you for watching this episode of The District Dish.